Happy Friday, I'm forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams. The Romeo Peach Festival is now open and it's a peach of a forecast. Can't wait to give it to you. Sounds good, Kim. Also, first at four, many of you are tracking the UAW's contract talks online. Why General Motors is blasting a new move by the union. And if you are not talking about this police shooting, you will be after seeing this video. See what we're learning about the death of a young pregnant mother. Plus, here's Hank. Wildfires in Hawaii, tropical storms, hurricanes hitting parts of Florida. Before you donate to help others, we have important information to make sure the money you give goes to those who need it. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald in for Karen Drew today. First at four, Belleville police are sorting through evidence and trying to find out why two people were shot. Police haven't laid out a specific timeline, but we do know a man and a woman were both shot shortly after 11 p.m. last night in the city's downtown on Main Street. It happened between 3rd and 5th Streets. Police believe the gunfire may be connected to a stolen car they were pursuing around the same time. There is a lot of pieces to put together and it is unsettling for people who live nearby. It's a shame. I, I'm in utter shock. My whole family, my daughter lives close, my, we live close. I mean, it's, it's disappointing. The man who was shot is in critical condition. The woman is described as stable. We will have a live update on the investigation with any new information on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock for you today. Contract talks between the UAW and Detroit's big three automakers are already getting pretty contentious. Union President Sean Fain dropped some bombshells in the Facebook Live address we previewed for you yesterday. He announced the UAW has filed unfair labor practice charges against General Motors and Stellantis for not responding to union proposals. Both Stellantis and General Motors refute those charges in a statement. GM says, quote, we believe it has no merit and is an insult to the bargaining committee. We have been hyper-focused on negotiating directly and in good faith with the UAW and are making progress. We have posted full statements from GM, Stellantis, and Ford at ClickOnDetroit.com. It is one of our top trending stories today. Now, Ford did respond to the UAW, but Fain is blasting its offer. When it comes to raises, Ford is proposing a 9% increase over the course of the next contract. Fain wants 46%. Current contract expires on September 14th. Tonight, business editor Rod Maloney will look at what it means to bring in the National Labor Relations Board at this point in the negotiations. That part of the story on Local 4 News at 5. Well, if it's Labor Day weekend in Metro Detroit, you know it's time for festivals. So it's the Jazz Fest downtown, it's Arts, Beats and Eats in Royal Oak, and it's the Peach Fest in Romeo, just to name a few. And that's where Kim Adams is live for us with the first forecast. It is gorgeous out there, Kim. Oh, Christy, I mean, you could not ask for a better weekend. If you don't like it too hot and you're bothered by the 90s, you might want to get out here either tonight or tomorrow. But the Peach Festival is open. They open their doors at 4 o'clock, and it is going to be a beautiful weekend for the festival. So let's start with our local temperatures right now. Uh, it's been a nice day. and We've had temperatures in the 70s, but that's going to be the last time we're in the 70s for quite some time, at least during the day. 73 now in Mount Clemens, mid-70s in Pontiac, 75 at Metro Air airport. Clouds and radar, I mean, barely a cloud in the sky. There are a couple of clouds back in Green Bay, but that's about it. Otherwise, it is absolutely perfect. If you're headed to East Lansing tonight, what a great night for the game against CMU. Sunshine at 5 o'clock, kickoff feeling great, 74. Clear skies by 10 o'clock tonight. Again, I'm live at the Romeo Peach Festival, but it's not just peaches out here. Carlo from Gambino's Catering making, oh, what is this? Is this margarita? Carlos, is this, what is this? Margarita, yes. What? Margarita. Margarita. Perfect. And how many pizzas do you think you're going to be making this weekend? This weekend, about a thousand. A thousand pizzas? And this is this is the first here tonight. So yes. we've got a lot more food, a lot more fun. We're starting with pizza. We're going to end tonight at 6, Christy, with beer. So you want to stay tuned for that. Well, I'm in. I count a thousand and one. So <laughs> count me in on that pizza. Thanks so much, Kim. I we'll see you in a bit. I figured you would be, yes. <laughs> Sounds good. Sure.
All right, in more news, new body cam video is sparking another national debate about the use of deadly force. Police in Ohio shot and killed a pregnant woman during a shoplifting investigation. Kimberly Gill joins us with some of that video. Kim, it really is very difficult to watch. It is. It's disturbing. And good afternoon to you, Christy. The family of 21-year-old Takaya Young calls the shooting a, quote, gross misuse of power and authority. Police surrounded her car to talk about a possible theft, asked her to get out, but she refused. Then her car started moving forward toward one of the officers, and then he fired. Here's part of the body cam video. They said, you're so soft, do not leave. Get out of the car. Then, then get out. No, then get out. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Shots fired. Stop the car. Stop. The Blendon Township Police Department in Ohio says Young received first aid within 70 seconds and an ER doctor who was in the parking lot came to help, but the young woman and the child she was carrying both died. She was also the mother of two other children ages six and three years of age. Young's family denies she stole anything. The officer who shot her is on administrative leave while the Ohio Bureau of Investigation reviews the shooting. A second officer on the scene has returned to act of duty. Shooting took place August 24th. The video, though, was just released today. So, Christy, we will be following this as we learn more. Yeah, so it's, many questions. All yeah. right, thanks so much, Kim. Sure. Well, the newest jobs report gives us a lot to think about when it comes to the economy. American employers added 187,000 jobs in August, and that is 10,000 more than the payroll processor ADP predicted two days ago. That shows the job market is still pretty resilient, even though it's slowing down a bit. The unemployment rate is up to 3.8 percent, and that is the highest level since February of 2022. The decelerating job market might convince the Fed, though, to stop a long series of interest rate hikes. Inflation has fallen from a peak of 9.1 percent last year to 3.2 percent now, but the Fed's goal is 2 percent. So, of course, stay tuned on that one. Well, step by step, survivors of Hurricane Adalia are just beginning to pick up the pieces of their lives. This is drone video from Horseshoe Beach in Florida. It is one of the spots that was hit the hardest. First step in the cleanup is to send trucks to start taking the debris away. Some homes literally fell apart during the storm. The governor is sending trailers to the area to give people a place to stay. President Joe Biden plans to visit Florida tomorrow morning. Well, many of you might be looking for ways to help victims of those recent disasters, but before you open your heart and your bank account, you might want to double check exactly where your money is going. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester is live, and Hank, this is always a big concern because scammers, well, they're looking to take advantage of our goodwill. Yeah, preying on the opportunity, right? I mean, for example, I was just typing in donate to Hawaii here online and at least 50 different websites and organizations pop up. So how can you tell what's legit, what's real and what's fake? Here's what you need to know. Wild weather, storms crashing into Florida, wildfires taking over parts of Hawaii, celebrities working to raise funds for those affected and the legitimate organizations we all know, like the Red Cross on the ground, helping in many ways. However, this is also a key moment for scammers to get you. How? They create fake websites and send text messages working to get you to give. But the money goes to them. You have to be very careful and make sure you're looking up the name of the organization. Make sure you're seeing whether or not there's a presence on the ground in the area that they say that they are helping. Here's the warning for you today. You'll see nonprofits that just pop up overnight. Well, if you couldn't find any information about that nonprofit prior to whenever the event happened, then that's a huge red flag. Fake GoFundMe accounts are often also created. Now, the website says they work to verify those accounts in real time, but scammers move quickly, so you need to be aware. Oprah has recently posted on her own Instagram page regarding a legit fundraising effort to help those in Hawaii. And the United Way and Red Cross have information online right now to help guide you as you make donations either now for these disasters or in the future. While those crowdfunding sites do a very good job of making sure that the money go goes to the campaign organizer, that does not mean that the organizer knows the people that it says that it's going to. 
And, and that's really always the concern in all of this. You just want to make sure the money that you are giving actually goes to the right organization and then trickles down to those who need it most. Again, right now on the Red Cross website, the United Way website, they have very clear information about how you can donate to those in Hawaii and also to those dealing with the storms right now in Florida. We're live here tonight downtown Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Local 4. All right. Sounds good. Great advice. Thanks so much, Hank.